Yo, people, it's your boy Nara here with Ari. I don't know, so this is the fix from the fix, aka nightly fix, aka the fix podcast, aka all type of something. But they I represent for the entertainment report podcast. Yep, check them out on YouTube, subscribe to their channel, and listen to them everywhere pods are casted. So that means like iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, you name it, they're on it. Subscribe to them YouTube channel too. You see me? Yeah, man, the Entertainment Report Podcast. Big up, Muscle. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? This is Muscle, and this is another Two Line Music Huts Entertainment Report Podcast. And tonight, we have two special guests in the building. We're talking about they used to be nightly fix, but now they are the fix. We have Naro and Ari from The Fix in the building tonight. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Yo, bless Hi. up, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bless up, Muscle. Bless up, the world. Crew, is mm-hmm. it me? Yes, man. That came in. Report crew. You have them for your fan them? Oh, <laughs> not yet. We're working on the name. What's the name of the the fix? What you guys, what's the name of you guys, people? Fix Nation. Fix. All right. You guys both know it. That's what I like. The fix and Nation. We have my, right. my fans in the narrow lights. So what's going on on you guys' side tonight down there in Jamaica? How is it going right now? Uh, it's a bag of unsurety, a bag of confusion, it would seem. Mm-hmm. Especially yeah. if you live in a Portmore. Yeah. It's, yeah. well, St. Catherine overall, because yeah. the parish of St. Catherine is totally locked down now. Mm-hmm. Um, but, I mean, I think people just taking it day by day. You have some naysayers who like, oh, we want this open up now. And yeah. people still don't really understand or get the concept of social distancing. So that yeah. still seems to be a challenge. But um, overall, I think most of us, majority of us who really understand the pandemic and get it, are practicing quarantining, social distancing, and just taking it day by day. And you find that a lot of young people aren't really getting it, or people are just people in general are not really getting it? Hmm. I think it's a mixture. Like, yeah. from based on what I see on social media, Yeah. Well, all the folks aren't on social media, one, okay, but when they sit out on a boat, mm-hmm. um, they have their mask on, they they overall get the whole social they get the whole corona and um what it means, but I think I think in general old old people get it uh, from them here's a corona pe- coronavirus kill old people like yeah. they've been inside <laughs> for a long time. You know? Yeah. Um yeah. It's more like a mixture for you, like my like middle age mm-hmm. and some of the, the younger because ones. Young folks, really. younger folks think that, well, it's only affecting the elderly, so I'm good. So even if I catch it, it's yeah. no big deal. Yeah. So they don't really totally get it. So, well, yeah, you may get it, but then I'm to the granny that live in the house. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm to your grandma, your mom, who probably have hypertension, diabetes, have all these complications, who can't fight it off like you. So it's a, I would say, I can comfortably say it's a mixture of both the elderly and the young folks who really don't get it. All right. And how has it affected both you guys personally and professionally? Um, personally, I'm great. I get yeah. to play and work at home, which yeah. is okay. fine. <laughs> my 9 to 5. Yeah. But even though I had to be on the road to Easter, like um, my job is kind of sporadic like that. Um, so I had to be on the road to Easter. Up to yesterday, I was on the road. Um, but for the most part, I'm in. I'm quarantining. I, again, work from home. Um, I've been inside, you know, before inside was even a thing. Yeah. You know? love the yard. <laughs> yeah. I've been mean, really party all that hard. So, yeah. I'm a good man. I've been handling it well personally. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, the fix though it's been different because yeah. we've had to be using my home <laughs> which is like too much like i really don't like too much people over me at any way okay. but no um other than that because we haven't really been doing interviews like that mm. we try to have calling like over the phone okay um remote interviews for the what only two people like jeremy and not nice. Not nice. Donna uh, and Donna you Martin. Yeah. There's Everybody somebody you. else. Was there? There's three people. Yeah. 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 We've been doing interviews over the phone now. You know? yeah. So it, it affects us in that way. So that mm-hmm. face-to-face interactive interviews that we're known for and really able to do yeah. anymore. So yeah. 
But yeah. how do you find they're working for you the over the phones or even like the style that we're doing with the Skype style? How do you find that works for you opposed to being live? Um, it works. Well, in terms of the podcast, it, it, it's not really a problem because we're able to be in, in, in one spot. Okay. Uh, but in regards to actually talking to, to people, it kind of it, 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 it adversely affects us in that, you know, we are able to better do our things when, do our thing when the, the, the guest is in person. Yeah. You know, we're able to work our little head magic and everything there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm starting yeah. to twitch apparently. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we, we've never really liked doing over the phone interviews, to be honest. We've always champion doing them face to face. Even when artists would say, oh, we can do it over the phone, like, no, much rather. Rare occasions we do as well. Yeah, like, very rare. Um, but yeah, we'd rather them forward and we do it and we're in the same environment and yeah, it works better that way. There are certain vibes you get when people are in the same room, nuances. Yeah. There's just certain body language that you understand. Yeah. Okay. You understand yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Especially when you've been around long enough. Let's yeah. get to the beginning of Nightly Fix. How did you guys even get to Nightly Fix in the first place? Well, um, I was working at Newstock as a receptionist. I was okay. in... I was you might not know what New Stock is. Shut actually. up. It's it a radio station in Jamaica on the UA campus. Yeah, okay. Um, I was working as a receptionist, like, my final year at UA. And a thought just hit me like a lightning bolt and said, so like, why isn't a program directly full-on catering to the, I guess, well, in my mind, just seeing, like, the overall campus population, which is mostly 20 Mm -hmm. 20 year olds like yeah. 18, 18 yeah. 25 30 like millennials like why isn't a show um a directed creator engineer there was one at the time and that was jimmy Chu, um jimmy 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 q jimmy Chu, the time right <laughs> it was just <dropped> through, you know? <laughs> no it's a whole thing but no it was like one show mm -hmm. that was catering to and i thought that you know the show could the, the station overall could use some youthful energy okay and um i've had an idea for a show and i was like hey nari you want to do it with me because nari did communications at utec and we, did, we know each, most people know that we know me and nari used to go heidel so we know each other from there okay to Uma's girls he went to Uma's boys and then i was working at gleaner and then he started to work at the gleaner so that's how we um connect and i said hey yo let's do this show she ever start me and I follow me everyone, everyone. Sorry. That's, it's, you know what, I'm not even in a, an, an aggressive mood tonight, so I'm just yeah. going to go along with him. Yeah. But no, so I was like, yeah, come on, let's do this show. As I said, he was working as a, well, his degree is in communications and technology. And I've held a job in, in radio previously. Yeah. yeah. So. Okay. So like, yeah, let's do this. And, and I what was, year was it that you guys actually started? 2014. It was 24, so six years. Yeah, January yeah. 2014. Oh, and how long were you guys on the radio for? Well, four year. What do you mean? Wait, before, long, before. No, before. since we've been doing. Yeah, before. nightly fix. How long has a nightly four fix years. been on the radio? Oh. It's about four years. Yeah, since the, Well, yeah, because we came off in 21. 2018. Yeah. yeah. So, so four, that would be four years. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and how many interviews did you guys actually do over there? And what made you guys decide to put it on YouTube? Wow. Can I question that? You can't come from I know. <laughs> no, I, I know. Sure. You don't, you don't do that. I, 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 I kill Ari Brain with a scene for four years. <laughs> <laughs> and I got how much interview with him. Yeah, no, it's, no. no it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lot. We never really keep count. Yeah. Um, we just glad and grateful for everybody that come through um even if they don't like us yeah <laughs> <They're not laughs> us. <laughs> but okay. well then tell me this if you don't remember how many what what were some of your most memorable ones and what made you decide to put them on youtube oh well, um, let me answer the second one so yeah, the, um, the, the the second part of the question why we put it on youtube is because we we got the night slot so it was like 9 to 11 in the night and i thought that and I, and I, I was following the template of the Breakfast Club, of Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy Kimmel, Howard Stern, mm -hmm. 
um, you know, late night talk shows overseas and how I can get to stay up and watch him so late. Yeah. And that's why you have the YouTube. So it was just a thought that came to me. Say, well, we're on the night slot. Let's just keep it there. And and it was only and as I said, it was kind of for posterity reasons as well. Like just just in just like in memory, and say, hey, look what we did. So that was one of that was a key reason why just to to set out. If you can't watch it or you can't listen to us live. Yeah. You can watch it whenever you feel like. Another so. reason too, we never really see nobody else I do it. And I really see, at least on a consistent basis. basis you know? right. Um we'd look and we'd look at the landscape and say, Oh, they're doing it but not really consistent. They had them post one and two time. Um so yeah, they're they we can fill that spot where we can operate as a show on radio and post consistently on YouTube could work because nobody else was doing it at the time. Yeah. No, not at all. In 2014, because that was even somewhat early to YouTube in this sphere right here. A lot of people Much. were not doing it at that time. No, not mm -hmm. at all. What were some of your most memorable interviews at that time? During the whole four year span? Yeah. Of course, Bounty Killer, they're on top of the lists. Number one. Number one. one, <laughs> one. Listen, let me tell you why I say number one. Mm. That was. You took him through many moods. You've seen the many moods of Rodney. Plus, you guys had it inside. It seemed like the program finished and you guys continued outside. That was the most epic interview I've ever seen. Take it from inside right to outside. Crazy. Yeah, it, it was it was, was an experience. Um, yeah, to this day, people say I had the best, not only our best interview, but the best bounty killer interview yeah, that people yeah, ever yeah, say. Yeah. Um, Oh yeah, there's more to that interview that people even know about. There's an uncut version to the uncut version. Yeah. So yeah, when are you guys gonna good. actually put that out? Maybe. Nah. Yeah. Nah. nah. Mm -hmm. we're, 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 we're respecting the wishes of his team and we're not. So unless he unless says them, yes, them give with yeah. the green light. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, about how much more is missing out of that interview? But a good 10 to 15 minutes. I would say 20. Like a good chunk. Like a, a really good, good chunk. chunk. Yeah. Like a real, a real morsel of history. Yeah. You kind of, I guess, so, ah. a hint. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the genesis mm -hmm. of a particular beef. Got you, got you, got you. Understand. All right, give me some more pivotal moments in our um, nightly fix before we even get to the fix. There's our interview with Alkaline, which was a calling interview. It wasn't meant to be initially, but um, in, in Stan Real, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it stood us up. Yeah, pretty much. And that yeah. turned into a calling. That was one that it kind of put up on him. Yeah. Um, there was, uh, of course, you have two not twin interviews there. Mm -hmm. You have a... Uh, Wayne Marshall. Uh, Wayne Marshall is good. The Wayne Marshall Sean and Tommy Chin, Sean Paul. No, no. Wayne Marshall on the radio, not Wayne Marshall and Tommy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a podcast. podcast. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Um, um, I think Sean Paul was also good, too. Was. Yeah. Um, Walshie. Yeah. Anytime Walshie for, for right. that's, a, that's a, an event. Also, Yanni Curvy, Diva, anytime she for yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, I remember those ones too. Yeah. You know, I think the one that sticks out to me, the first, first one is when we did with Miss Chin. She was Kipridge baby, or she is Kipridge baby mother. Yeah. And I want, like it went like kind of viral. And I was like, why? Because the most, the majority of the, the comments were negative. Yeah. Her. And yeah. I, that was the first time I realized that wow, like hate and love are pretty much a different side of the same coin. You understand? Like, this is crazy. As I mentioned, that we cannot forget Goliba. Yeah. yeah. Goliba. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 That was Maybe a big, big one. That's why those interviews stand out, but they do stand out. Mm. All right. I got you. And then. What was it like transitioning from radio to independent where you guys are just now doing podcasts? And why did you guys leave the radio? It was a rough, rough transition. It was a rough, rough thing to do. Um, we were inactive for like a couple of months too. Okay. Um, we left the radio in, in um, April of 2018, right? It was the April. Mm -hmm. And then we didn't do anything until like May or June. 
think of June, yeah. Yeah. Because we had like it took a month to kind of figure out where we're gonna shoot Marie from, where we can go, mm. what we can do, um, like who can come along with us because we weren't well. Oh god, that's like a dear. <laughs> 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 but yeah, it was it was a whole bunch of things. So mm. it took a month to kind of kind of get the feet going. So we have to shout out if we can publicly here. Shout out to um buzzers the what's the philip and the crew over there buzzers by Portland, right? yeah um what's the name of the club again alive, alive. Uh-huh. they they allowed us um their space in them in a room when everything live not back you can come over portmore and go check out alive entertainment nightclub uh-huh. Um, so shout out to Philip again. They gave us access to their rooms and they're like, sure, no problem. So that was what we were that was where we were for like a good well, two months. About yeah, that. yeah. Oh why well if we never get the money. Plain answer. Straight up. Fair enough. I could I could live with that, you know what I mean? Plain and simple. When we when we did calculations and, and things like that, we say we're spending more money than we're making. So I think the thing is we were on nine to eleven in the night in for the like night. a two years mm. or three two and a half years, three years. Once a week. Yeah, yeah. Once a week. Okay. So we all had different ventures. Like Naro was working, I was working, um Burns had the opportunity to do other things. That's our DJ, DJ. Our, right. And Javi and Kimmy, um, Jervis or videographer and our team. They were still in school. So, you know, it it worked. For that time, so we all made it work for the one one night a week, Thursday night. Mm-hmm. So when we got the opportunity, I said, "Hey, we like how the show is going. If you come on to the daytime, it's gonna be great and fantastic. Come on, sign this contract and let's yeah. work it all out." Yeah. But it didn't work out at all. At no, no, all. Really. <laughs> it kind of worked out in terms of the content and, and delivering right. more content right. on a weekly basis. Right. It worked out that part. Yeah. And even giving our YouTube numbers a more a of a spike, push, a right. spike. At, but in terms of actual money that was getting from the station itself. Yeah, more. that's what I was saying. Like it because at that time I had to leave my job because I couldn't facilitate working. Um, because we know when we got the opportunity, it was now Mondays to Fridays, 2.30 to 5. And my job wouldn't allow me to work. Okay. Both jobs. Yeah. So I was like, all right, then. I, I'd be mad at myself if I didn't take the opportunity and see where it could go. Mm-hmm. So I, I, with faith, I left my job. Mm-hmm. But that faith... <laughs> you're, you're telling a serious story, so I'm trying to be serious with you also. <laughs> so you know, so we had to we had to take the hard decision and say we're not renewing the contract. So you know, we we took on our own. Okay, and that's what it is, especially when now you guys went from radio where it seemed like it was a bit comfortable to now totally independent on with your own stuff on your own podcast and stuff. How often do you guys record now and what is really the structure of the fix opposed to what nightly fix was like? Um, well, we, before this whole panda pandemic hit, we, we shot like twice a week on average. Um, before we moved to being independent, we're a radio show street, but now being independent, we've more like evolved into more of a media platform. So we're not really chained down by the restrictions of radio like that. We'll, we'll do several different things. You see, we'll do, in addition to the interviews that we already do, we also spawn a podcast. Um, we also do other things like even freestyles, reaction videos, mm-hmm. things like that, you know? It's varying the content and, you know, evolving from a radio show into more of a media platform. Mm-hmm. Because that- you, have, you have more things you could play around with. You have more yeah. freedom. You don't have the comfort of the radio, but you have more freedom to do what you're doing on your side there. Yeah. When The Fix was born, what were some of your pivotal moments in The Fix where you're seeing, okay, this is really going somewhere now? Um, a certain interviews and then the, the, the reaction to them. Yeah. Like when people actually seen at the streets are recognized as oh mm-hmm. yeah now you're watching interview you're on the bad things like that 
Um, there's an interview that we didn't really mention, but it was like the real starting kickoff point where people really began to notice us. Mm -hmm. So um, was with this union, Ricky Carty. I don't remember. And like they put out this video, like it was basically a sex. Yeah. Okay. It was, it was really a blue. It was really a blue movie. Yeah. Yeah. And um, it did go viral from World Star and everything. I was say, yo, I could interview man. You know, whenever one of punches with him, I remember like reading comments. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, what people did say under the video to him, to him face, and uh, yeah. like, yeah, that did just take off. I said, Yo, you would have you tell him so brazen, yeah, shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> like, so, that, like those. Mm -hmm. so even the fix it. itself now, which one, which ones would you say really took off? Because for me, when you really seen the fix pop off again, mm -hmm. it's because of controversy with um, spice, yeah, yeah. That was really a pivotal moment right there. And just even the way how you held it together was amazing there too. So, a trap. so I heard <laughs> the merch. Ufring.com <laughs> <laughs> slash store slash the fixed day a merch. It's right there. I had to, to plug it. We yeah. had to plug it. Oh yeah. yeah. It was a pivotal moment for us. Um mm -hmm. something that could have got either way, could have sunk us or it could have uh, well work in our favor, which it pretty much did in that moment. Yeah, um, yeah people really took notice of, of us who didn't already mm -hmm. um, and started to watch more sort of spikes in, in the numbers and things like that. So mm -hmm. yeah, it was, Definitely especially for me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just the way how you held it together is like, wow, <laughs> like, wow. How important do you think the fix is to the whole culture right now? It's so very important right now. I think we've established ourselves as a pillar in dancehall and the whole entertainment space right now. Mm -hmm. We've been told, you know, one, two, two, and hard, but like, if, if you're an artist and you don't forward to our show on our platform, then you're not really going go out with anything. So we've yeah. told. Okay. Um, along with the two other pillars, of course, when I say them, them, uh, yeah, we're not free people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Here and on stage. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here yeah. and on stage. They came Along before with us, us. Like, they paved the way, and mm -hmm. we are standing on their shoulders. Yeah. Indeed. Till we can stand beside them, and people can look at us mm -hmm. as they look to those, like, as they look on those two platforms. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And where are you looking to actually take it right now? Much, much further, much, much further. As I said, we've established ourselves as a media platform. I really want to go forward as being a media conglomerate business, you know, that like the likes are complex and, you know, something like that. We we'll offer a whole heap of different content. That's been our mantra. Nara said that since. I'm, I'm kind of like a, when I talk, I talk like a villain. Yeah, gosh, <laughs> we just want to take over the world. <laughs> I just want to take over the world. That, that I'm, yeah. I'm the brain. He's been, yeah. but <laughs> no, because I have tons of ideas, and you know, we just need the cash. Because down here, I don't know what it's like overseas where you are, but here locally, it is like a whole different fight and struggle to just get people to recognize you, to recognize the content where you're trying to dif um, differentiate yourself and, and to be different and they're like no don't do that because even curse words like no they don't want curse words in it but it's like well this is different and we're trying to allow people to be free and comfortable to share them their their thoughts and you know sometimes sharing their thoughts come with a little bad word but no they don't like that so it's just a whole challenge that we have to fight and go through and trying to figure in, figure out or um well, I, at least for me, I'm trying to figure out where we stand and how to move forward. So, yeah. I, I know that we have, we, there's bigger things in store and there's so much more that both me and Nara can accomplish. But it's just a kind of least a difficult task right now. All right. And when you look at your numbers, where's most of your support coming from right now? U.S. Yeah. From overseas. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I'd say overseas in general. Like, yeah. we, I think the... The viewers definitely come from Jamaica. Mm -hmm. Most of the viewers actually come from the US. Mm. Okay. 
second most is from Jamaica and then Canada and then UK. Okay. Do you guys actually plan on doing any live shows? Because I know that's something that's big right now. And you guys have access or even because you guys are on the island and there's a lot of artists here, you figure that you guys might want to do some live shows. Yeah, that's even up. That's a part of our repertoire right now. We do a couple of live shows, a couple of live Q&As. And currently we partner with Sunday Live. I've seen that uh, one. Yeah, that's, that's a live streaming show that showcases several artists, mostly upcoming artists. And Busty we say both youths, of course. So yeah, mm -hmm. live is definitely something that we'd want to further explore. Yeah. No, because I like what you guys are doing, especially from, because we're located in Toronto, Canada. You get to see what's going on. It's like you guys are the new streets. Before you'd have to pick up a phone and call and see what's going on, but you guys are the streets now. So you just check on Nightly Fix and they'll tell you what's going on. Yeah, we pride ourselves in being that, you know, we're being the... Are you closing the wash? Yeah. Basketball game, not a dog. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we pride ourselves in being that for the culture and being that in the face, you know, mm -hmm. especially having an eye for, for the next, you know, uprising artist, the next big artist, the next big thing in the space. We, we pride ourselves in giving the youths them what probably never necessarily have that platform there for showcase themselves mm -hmm. we pride ourselves in being that because we're from that for sure that makes sense who would three of your dream best dream guests be i mean over she damian marley yeah. for sure yeah. okay. i think you say i kind of don't want it to happen why I don't want it to happen. <laughs> why because i'd be way too beside myself okay when conduct the interview properly so it's just like i just want to like yeah not be there <laughs> no, we're gonna call it into existence we're gonna make it happen <laughs> in, in, in fact his people want it to happen it's like no but no she, she's been wondering <laughs> no. all right who else are you guys looking for that honestly i would like to talk to spice like have a full-on I had that in mind too, actually. Re like yeah. a real conversation, put aside all the mess. Mm -hmm. Just have a conversation because, you know, it's other than that, it would be good content. It's just of course. to kind of share where we're coming from. And I guess when the anger is taken out of it, because of course she expressed her anger mm -hmm. and we settled and we've moved on beyond it. So it's just trying to reach and i guess it's not even a compromise but just to reach a deeper level of understanding yeah, so sure. that's what i would want the thing is you know, once people actually get for their own we actually get for no way mm -hmm. we're not horrible people yeah, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing is, what the meaning is that told our certain things and because yeah. it, it, that formed our view of mm -hmm. us and one of me especially mm -hmm. and that's where things went left yeah but so do you oh, think it's because you guys are outspoken or they kind of think that you guys are trolling them why they would approach you like that from time to time outspoken yeah yeah and some of them because we we're kind of young too mm -hmm. so then we see that as not as not being as experienced i would not pay as much dues as the next person you know them them where the, yeah. so yeah that's where i feel that some of that comes from Mm -hmm. And especially you don't have anybody to answer to. You're basically your own boss. So then there's yeah. nobody controlling what you're saying. Pretty much. People are always trying for years that we own the name and we own our shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, oh, well, all them can't get for set up because we can, because we own it. <laughs> yeah, of course. That's your thing. And that's what a lot of people don't understand. The mm -hmm. new media, it's all about ownership. So if you have content that you had a guest like Bounty came around a couple, couple years ago. If he said something that was pivotal that came through six years later, you could still use that clip and put it back out because you own it. Yep. And, and that's what it comes down to ownership of your content. She's right. Yeah. I mean, what else are we gonna see from you guys for 2020? One last question here, and then I have a round here called Rapid Facts. Well, I mean, no, 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 no. This yeah. whole pandemic thing, I, I'm not sure. And you just need to write off. Uh, oh, oh, boy. Um, but yeah, we, we had our thing called Freestyle Fridays. Um, mm -hmm. 
it off towards the tail end of last year, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, it into this year, we kind of go on higher to so that. We had planned to bring it back like around them time, yeah, but yeah. Corona. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, definitely that bringing that back in a big way. Um, been looking into resurrecting. Speaking of freestyle, been looking into re- um, resurrecting our our March Madness. Okay. Freestyle tournament. Yeah. Um, March don't go and already, but as mm-hmm. I have from that, I just had the idea of like just having like a league. Mm-hmm. You know, just have a league style type thing with freestyles, and you know, you have your champion, and you have rankings and things like that. Okay. So that's something I've always wanted to do. Um, to bring bring back Ari, you know I'm not necessarily bring for the first time. Um, Miss, honestly, I have a bag of ideas. I do have a lot of ideas, but at this point in time, it's just yeah. trying to see how the year pan out. Okay. And we, there are several other things that need to work out internally. So it's just trying to take that step by step and not get ahead of ourselves, at least myself. Okay. So um, I'm just trying to get through each day each week sure. each month <laughs> until the year end because we have certain plans as well. we just don't know how them are pan out that's and yeah it. we don't want to talk and you know, say, ah, shit, they never work yeah. yeah i got you something super random what are you guys listening to what's on your playlist right now what's on my playlist trini bad i, I was trini just saying the same <laughs> thing. Dancer. Yeah. dancer um leela ike mm-hmm. um Young youths, them the young youth, Skilly Ben, Chaos for me, Chaos, they, they of course, mm-hmm. like, yeah, then the Depan playlist, really. Okay, that's what you guys are feeling right now. All right, yeah. that's how you keep your ear to the street by keeping it younger, listening to a lot of the younger, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, all right, I got a round here called a rapid facts. I'm gonna ask you guys, it's about 14 questions. Ask you guys some quick questions, you guys give me back some quick answers. All right, why 14? We just, Great. that's a random number. We just, yeah. All right, don't worry. You know what? And yeah, since you're that. talking, we're going to start with Ari, okay? Oh, my God. <laughs> Ladies before gentlemen, all right? When it comes to chicken wings, do you prefer drums or flats? Drums. Narrow? Yeah, that drums. Yeah. <laughs> okay, all right. What's your favorite color? Blue. Blue. Ah, blue shoes. <laughs> 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 all right. Yeah. All right. Who's your favorite basketball player of all times? Kobe Bryant, easy. Good. R.I.P. All right. Ari? I don't really watch it. Okay. Not my current yeah. favorite, no? I mean, yeah. I, I, I watched the game mm-hmm. and I like I, I didn't like it before, mm-hmm. but I'm into it now. But I like Steph. Steph is good. Um mm-hmm. Steph Curry. Yeah. Um Kevin Durant. Yeah. Yeah, Kevin Durant. Yeah, he's good. <laughs> I don't know. It, it don't yeah. really matter to me. Like, I don't really... I'm not as attached to the sports as he is. Not just a problem. Names and she's just going to agree to it. <laughs> Shannon Brown? No? That's not... No. <laughs> <laughs> you can't... That's drink. a problem. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so stupid. <laughs> All, right. All right. If you could have dinner with three people, dead or alive, who would they be? Ari, because you start this. Damien, Julia, Gunn, <laughs> So no matter. Um, Michael Jackson. Okay. Because he's just weird, and I just like him. Like him, just weird, and just you know, you know, like him. Yeah. And um, right now in these times, I definitely say my grandma. She's deceased. Mm-hmm. Um, and even just the other day, I was thinking about her. So I definitely want to have dinner with her again. Okay. It's one dinner. All right. Um, that's a Kobe, of course. We just say um, Cristiano Ronaldo, and um, um, oh, my opportunity of female, in there. Scarlett Johnson. <laughs> All right, good choices. Yeah. All right, okay. What's the last book you read or listened to? There you. Ah, well. Tell them the filth you've been. Ah! Reading. <laughs> no, I'm actually I'm actually on Michelle Obama becoming. So, okay. so I'm reading now. All right. I'm All right. I'm the reader of the group, so I mostly read. So yeah. I've been All reading right. a lot a lot. Um my last book I read. I think it may just be the road code handbook. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> you know, yeah. you pilot that road, where the police stop me for? That's mm. embarrassing. Yeah. Ah, boy. All right. Well, what's your favorite movie of all time? Oh, no, hard question, no, bro. It's a very hard question. Uh, cause I'm this is rapid about... facts, quickly. Endgame, American Gangster. Like, mm. the, just the whole, the old, like, I think how that man move. Mm -hmm. Frank Lucas, just like, keep it quiet, keep it humble. Cut out the middle man. Yeah. Be a boss. Be about it. It's so inspiring. Other than selling the illegal stuff, no, no, but just the overall principle of how he right. has his life. <laughs> That's I'm how he really, likes. Yeah. Got you. Uh, um, right now, I'm just can't think of a series. I like Rocky movies. Yeah. I like that series. Marvel movies, too, of course. The mm -hmm. recent one, them mm -hmm. Avengers mm -hmm. and Game and Infinity mm -hmm. War and them thing there. Um, upgrade. A recent movie that bad. Really good. I want one movie I watched there. I said, you know, so that movie are really bad. Like one of the best movies I've watched ever. A, a social network, actually. Hmm. Okay. Movie there, yeah. with Mark from movie. with uh, Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook. Yeah, yeah. I hate movie. that movie. Yeah, <laughs> it sounds good. I already got somewhere here to go. Um, one word that describes you best. <laughs> 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 if I could take a screenshot and send it back to both you guys. <laughs> That's it. Oh, great. <laughs> Ready. I don't know, let me use the, the cliche term, real. Okay. All right. Real. All right. Are you? Um, I think, I don't know how to sum it up in a word, but mm. I guess it's just... So I'm a good fear. No, duality and duality, balance, complex. I don't know, but I think you if you know me or you be around me, like, oh she's smart, and then five seconds later, be like, no, she don't. She like <laughs> you know, it's it's All right. it's just I'm like that's a, a silly thing. Silly. That's I'm like a silly. complex person. I think that's the thing. Okay. Um, one physical thing you cannot live without. My phone. My All right. penis. <laughs> yeah, it's physical, but I cannot live without it. You always have to go there. Like you always. So that's how I interpreted there. the question. <laughs> hey, hey, whatever, whatever works for you, big boss. I live without it. All right. What's your biggest fear? Failure. I'll yeah. share that. But I'm, I'm apparently, according to Will Smith, I have to fail in order to succeed. But that's the only way. I guess those epic. Fails where you can't really fall back from. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Them the feel of them no fear. Yeah. 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 All right. Your favorite era in music? Early 2000s dancehall. Early to mid 2000s. Okay. Last Best two years? Life. All right. Your favorite TV show of all time? And when the heart again. <laughs> <laughs> Fraser. Okay. That's um. Probably the one I've rewatched the most at Fresh Prince of Berlin. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good one. Okay, last one here. Best advice you've received and who was it from? <laughs> Shadow. Yeah. Don't say that bow spice again. Right. <laughs> Shadow is our mentor. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I may be misquoting you. What's up while I'm done, lads? Yeah. Wow. And Ari? I don't know. Um, I guess it's just what my mom said. I think it, it carried me through in every way. Mm -hmm. Um, it's not a competition, but don't lose. You understand? <laughs> that's, that's pretty smart. Before I get you guys out of here, right now, that was the end of the rapid facts. Before I get you guys out of here, who should we be looking out for in 2020, right here, music wise? Diani, go to Diani. My boss, I'm gonna buzz right now, name Heaven Telegram. Mm -hmm. And my data artist will look out for right now. Um, Lila Ike. One thousand percent. One thousand percent. Me and my artist Lila chaos. Okay. Yes, he's there as well. He's really good. Um, 
Skilly, I mean, well, Skilly Bang Bang is kind of on an upward trajectory. And I right think now. he's, I think there's more, more left in yeah, him yeah, 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 to yeah. go. I don't like think he's like Uber a one-off. Yeah, I don't oh. think he's like a one-off artist. So I think there's more from him. Okay. Yeah, that's the picks. Is, that's the fixes picks for 2020. Yeah, much. Right. I think Quite, <laughs> quarter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quarter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quarter. For sure. You guys think you guys did an interview with him a couple of weeks ago or released it yeah. a couple of weeks ago? Yep, yeah. it was one of our last interviews that we did. Yeah, yeah. before BC, before Corona. <laughs> crazy, crazy. Leave some contact info before I get you out of here. People you don't know, you can follow me, E D O T N A R O. That's E dot Naro on Instagram and on Twitter. You can follow me on Instagram at A R I H A M M O N D. You can waffle, waffle. email us your songs and yeah, whatever. Of course, info at watch the fix, not whatever. We want to well, email uh, everything. No. Song. Let's be specific. Here. Song. Right. It may not, we may not always get through to us right away, but yeah, we we'll always try our best to take a listen. You know? Yeah. yeah. Um, you guys are good there. Ari, is Bears happen to be your uncle, father, next door neighbor? Who is Bears to you? Why is he such an important <laughs> Who is very Hammond to you, Ari? Hammond? Oh, my God. Yes, we are related. Okay. Yeah. Who is he to you? <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't just let it pass. Uh, you couldn't just let it pass. Nope. Um, <laughs> all right. As the explanation I've always said, for okay. years, I thought that my mother, my father and him were brothers. Okay. I mean, not brothers. They're cousins. Okay. So it would be my second cousin. Got you. Got yeah, they put them close like that, and mm -hmm. my father always wrote him, so I just thought they were brothers, but yeah, yeah no, they're cousins, and okay. second Oh, so, so then get the interview with them. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sad. Let me let you know that we get them on our own merits, and he doesn't really have anything to do with you. You guys' vibe is crazy. I could see that on camera and off camera, you guys are the exact same, same energy. Trust me, it's been good. I can't wait to actually either come down your side and come meet you guys in person, or when you guys come to Toronto, we can link up. Yeah, I'll take you give me a visa. <laughs> and um, are you a singer or what could you do there? No, she's far from being a singer. She's the worst singer, actually. So, no. My mom says I can sing. So, I think that's important. Nothing uh, like it, it, it generally starts there. Yeah, it generally like starts there. Mother's love. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are great. I'm looking out for the new episodes of The Fix. Trust me, you guys are very inspirational. You guys even inspire me. That's why I'm sitting here doing this now, too. You know what I mean? Thanks, bro. Thank you. We'll pick up you guys, though. That's good enough. We'll plug whatever. We'll have a plug The Fix. Make sure to subscribe if you're not already. YouTube.com slash The Fix J A. All right. Big up everybody that subscribed to us. And big up the, the, the ERP crew. You can't mm -hmm. call it that. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> you said, you I named have it right a there. Question. Okay, go ahead. Let's go. Why you name it Entertainment Report though? Because initially it came out as a one minute. It came out on um Instagram. We said, okay, let's just name it Entertainment Report because what we what we talk about is anything from pastors to porn stars and everything in between. That's who we All interview. Right. You know what I mean? So I said it's entertaining. Everybody knows those two subjects. Yeah. <laughs> everybody no, because you, you know up here, down here, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. But the so, whole name is Entertainment Report Podcast. It's not okay. Entertainment Report. Entertainment Report Podcast. Oh, okay. Subtle difference. There. Yeah. You know what I mean? Hello, Big up everybody in Canada. We'll get Oli Palo from Canada. Yes, thank you all Oli so people much. Are sent for you. If yeah. only they would actually send for you. Yeah, That'd be great. take me away. <laughs> <laughs> Things that you never know. After after all of this is done, anything is possible. Because right now, I tell people a lot of relationships are being built right now. If you mm -hmm. know what you're doing, you know what I mean. Sent you guys an email. You guys answered that within less than 24 hours, and here we are right now. Which is right. Mm -hmm. Big up, big guys. Self, thank you so very much. Well, thank ladies and gentlemen, thank sure. you, People ladies sure. and gentlemen. This so. is Muscle, and this has been another. Two Line Music Cuts Entertainment Report podcast, and we are out. This podcast is brought to you by www.twolinedmusichut.com.